Hey guys, Dr. J here, and in this quick little video, we're going to talk about maintenance and inspection, which is the last of the topics that we're going to cover on the Part 107 exam uh, slate of topics. These are recommendations from the FAA, and some of these will be on the Part 107 exam, and some are uh, just good common sense uh, to follow while we're flying. As usual, I've got our additional information here. A um, couple of these, I'll just note the FAA Order 9130.34D. This is probably more information than you need if you're just piloting a drone. But if you're interested in potentially building a DIY drone, then you might check that out. Um, lots of information in that order. <clears throat> now, the only regulation in Part 107 is Part 107, Section 15, which requires the RPIC to perform checks prior to each flight. So, as you'll recall from our regulation videos, the Remote Pilot in Command RPIC is is responsible for everything that goes on during a during before and after a drone flight and the RPIC is responsible to make sure that the drone is ready to fly fly and safe fly if you're flying recreationally you're going to need to remember which of the community based organization guidelines you're following and some of those will include pre-flight checks as well now some drone operators will provide a maintenance program or schedule of, of maintenance that you should follow uh, probably most of them do not do this, but some might. And a regular maintenance program should include um, a regular schedule for doing software upgrades. That's a big one for DJI drones, for example. Um, any modifications or replacements, you should think about warranties in that case. Um, oftentimes, if you try to do a repair yourself, it'll avoid a warranty, so keep that in mind. Um, but just general inspection of the drone is good to do before every flight and on a regular basis to make sure that your propellers are okay, your motors are okay, there's no cracks or problems with your hardware, anything like that. Now, if there's no maintenance schedule provided for the manufacturer, you should create one for your drone. And this is going to depend on the type of drone and how complicated this is. It could be very complicated if you have a, a large, expensive drone, or it might be very simple if you just have a small one. It's good to keep a log of repairs. Um, and in fact, um, by keeping a log, you can do regular inspections every so many hours of flight time, and that's a good idea. Um, and again, propellers, motors, control system, and then the general structure are basically the four areas that you're going to be checking for. And also, again, if you're keeping a log, you can document which components that you're replacing and when, and keep, uh, keep that in mind for getting replacement parts. And one thing I'll just point out is there's... Uh, there are drone logbooks available online. This is one example. There's others out there. Um, and it's a good idea to keep track both of your maintenance and also your flight time so that you know how long, how many flight hours it's been since your last maintenance. And this is something which is required for manned aircraft, but not for unmanned aircraft. But that could change in the future. So if you're already keeping that log, then that will help in the future if that becomes a requirement. <clears throat> There's a number of uh, recommendations for going through uh, a whole bunch of aspects of the drone. Um, of course, just visually inspecting the flight control surfaces and linkages, the motors, propellers, as we've already mentioned. Registration is also one that you'll want to check. You must be, you must have your registration number visible on the outside of the drone. So that's something to just make sure that your drone still has that registration marking. Energy supply, whether that's batteries or gas, you'll want to make sure that you have enough energy for your intended operation. Um, some drones have a magnetometer that needs to be calibrated. Uh, and in particular, uh, for example, I have a fixed wing drone which has to be calibrated if we are flying more than 50 miles away from our original location. And so that's something that you would do before your flight, um, but at the location where you're going to fly. Obviously, as you're getting ready to fly, you're going to want to check all your data links, your uh, ground support equipment that it's operating, takeoff and landing systems, that's all sort of on-site, as well as the signal link. One good thing to do with a quadcopter is to, when you take off, uh, is to go hover just above head level so that you don't run into anyone by mistake, and then just check all the control surfaces, forward, backwards, up, down, do small motions, and make sure that all the control surfaces are working. And then, very importantly, Make sure that your return to home function is set up correctly for your mission prior to flight. Um, so make sure that you know what the drone is going to do. If you were to lose signal for some reason, if the drone were to lose a connection to your controller, make sure that you've set it up already so that you know what the return to home is going to do and that it is what you expect. I've had a situation where a friend was flying a drone 
they moved their location and then told the then lost connection to the drone and it returned to home but because they had moved they weren't actually able to find the drone and then ended up losing the drone so make sure that your return to home behavior is as you expect and as you are as is consistent with your flight make sure that your fuel is of the correct type and quantity some larger drones are actually gasoline powered um, or other types of liquid fuel powered so make sure that you've got that taken care of if you're adding additional payloads make sure that they're correctly and securely attached um, so again, this is not an issue for if you're flying a smaller drone, but once you get into slightly larger drones, then different payloads can be attached and you want to make sure for sure that those are attached correctly. Uh, GPS connection is relevant. Um, that is going to be, could be uh, just ordinary GPS signal, or it could be an RTK GPS, real-time kinematic. And DJI drones and hotel drones, for example, have an RTK GPS option, and that's where you set up a GPS base station prior to your flight. So make sure that that connection is good. Uh, you want to look at your propellers. Make sure that your heading and altitude reading is correct and as, as you expect. Um, obstacles and obstructions in your flight path, as noted from your pre-flight mission planning. This is a big one. Um, and especially it's important if you have topography in your area. So in southern Missouri here, we've got hills and uh, lots of trees and also lots of towers. And if there's a tower, which is let's say it's below 400 feet and you're flying at 400 feet, but then the tower is on a hill, that might put it up higher than where your drone is flying if you're doing an automated mission. So you'll want to make sure to verify obstacles and obstructions in your flight path and make sure that your drone flight is programmed properly so that you're not going to hit those obstructions um, if they happen to be at a higher elevation than where you took off from. If you have a fixed wing drone that has to have a takeoff uh, strip, then you uh, want to check that for when it's taking off. This can be also true for even for vertical takeoff and landing drones um, because they usually don't go very high when they're taking off. And so you'll want to just check that there's no obstructions that they're going to run into. Um, planning for emergency situations, you need to plan for emergency situations. Um, that includes briefing everyone in the operation as to what the emergency procedures should be. What happens if, you're, if you lose control and your drone flies away? What happens if your drone crashes? And remember, in the case of an emergency, the FAA allows you to deviate from any of the regulation, I should say allows the remote pilot in command to deviate from any of the regulations if it is in the interest of safety to do so. Let's say you're flying at 400 feet and all of a sudden an aircraft enters your area and it's flying at roughly 400 feet. So one potential um, way to respond to that would be to take your drone up higher. So then you're flying above 400 feet. Maybe uh, another pilot is in the area and sees you do that and then reports it to the FAA. The FAA can request paperwork from you about the incident, um, but as long as it is in the, in the interest of safety and as long as uh, you, know, you didn't make the wrong decision, then the FAA will not uh, try to prosecute you for going above 400 feet because in the particular case that you were in, it was in the interest of safety to get away from the other aircraft. So that's kind of a funny example, but again, this is this is here for those kinds of situations. Any In any emergency, the remote pilot in command is allowed to deviate from the regulation if it is required by safety. Um, and you will be required to file paperwork about the incident if you're requested to do so by the FAA. You don't have to do it automatically, but if they request it, then you have to do it. So what are the kinds of emergencies you should prepare for? As I've already mentioned, crashing, loss of visual line of sight, loss of link between the control station and the drone, flying too near people, other aircraft. What are the, these are the contingencies. What is your response going to be in each one? And make sure that your team knows that as well. Now, uh, just a quick note on lithium batteries. Lithium batteries are capable of catching fire and exploding. And so just a few things to note with that. Uh, number one, you, you can use water to extinguish lithium fires that will cool those cells. Um, don't use ice, but use water to cool down the battery cells and do not pick up a battery on fire. Damaged or improperly charged or defective batteries pose a fire hazard. So you should inspect your batteries before each flight. Look for puffed up areas or bloating. That's a sign of damage. And if the battery does not fit into the drone, that's a good sign that it's probably bloating and needs to be disposed of. Uh, and also is extremely dangerous. So watch out for that. So loss of control link. Most UAVs are going to be operating on Wi-Fi frequencies, and so they can get interference from other Wi-Fi systems. What is going to happen if you lose control to your drone? Where is the drone going to go? 
if you do not have a return to home function, some drones do not, what is the drone going to do? Is it going to fall out of the sky? Uh, you need to be aware of that. And again, that's one of the reasons why the FAA requires that you do not fly over people unless you're using a category drone and doing category operations. Uh, does the UAV need to climb before coming home? So this is where you want to set that return to home function up so that it climbs up to a safe height and then returns to home. In the event of a flyaway, what are you going to do? What is your contingency plan for that? What if you're in controlled airspace and you get a runaway drone in controlled airspace? This should all be part of your emergency preparedness plan. And if you're, again, flying in controlled airspace, you'll want to have that plan in place ahead of time and who you're going to be contacting in the case of a flyaway.